Hi, I'm David Cooper from ePianos, and today I want to talk about the differences between the Yamaha YDP S54 and the YDP 164. They're both essentially the same instrument, but the cabinet is what makes it very different. The cabinet on the one on this side, this is the YDP 164, the cabinet is more traditional, music rests at the top, and the uh, lid comes down and closes it off. The cabinet on the S54 is much more contemporary. It's a much more slimline cabinet, and then um, we can close it down, and it looks more like a little console table. Music rest on the front here comes down. On the, uh, the YDP 164, the music rest is on top. It does fold flat if you wanted to, but essentially it's, it's the only bit at the top. We've got uh, 88 keys, 88 keys the same as a traditional acoustic piano, and they're gonna be digitally in tune. Uh, with a digital piano, you haven't got to worry about tuning. They can go by a radiator, they can go in your conservatory, they can go with underfloor heating. It's not gonna affect the tuning, okay? So the, uh, the digital pianos are very popular because of being able to carry them upstairs, and all these tuning issues that you have with an acoustic piano, you haven't really got to worry about with the digital ones. It's digitally gonna be in tune all the time. Okay, now the, these two models have been uh, sampling the, the big expensive Yamaha Grand Piano, the CFX Grand. Fantastic Grand Piano, uh, thousands and thousands of pounds, and that's what they've used to sample the, the voicing of the instrument. The actual sound you're hearing is potentially a, a live recording of a, a Yamaha Grand Piano being played, and every time you play different notes it's going to sound the same as the notes that would have been played on the Grand Yamaha CFX. So a really good tone to be hearing when you're playing your piano. Okay, something else to bear in mind is they've got something called a stereo optimizer. Now the stereophonic uh, optimizer is something that makes it feel like you're playing a real piano. The sound is coming from uh, essentially the strings on the area of the piano where the strings would be. If you're playing at the top of the piano keyboard, it's gonna be um, coming from those areas, those speakers. And even on headphones, you're gonna get this same effect the overall effect will be like you're playing in front of a real piano and the sound will be thrown around so it feels like you're, you're getting the sound coming from the right place. Um, people who put their pianos through other speakers, if they're coming through speakers at other ends of the room, it doesn't sound quite right because you're very familiar with the sound coming just from the right place on a, on a piano and that's what these digital ones now are able to offer you. Okay, so we've got uh, a two track recording feature on both these models. And that allows us to um, use it in two ways, really. We can either record in maybe the part that we're very um, used to playing, like it might be the melody of a, a piece of music you're learning. Then we can play that back while we play along with the other hand and keep practicing it till we get them synced together in our mind. We can also use the two track recording for um, improvising. We could play something in, we could play something over the top of it, and um, you could either play into two tracks and then joining it again, or just keep practicing and playing over the top so you can get used to accompanying yourself or to improvising and adding extra notes in. So there's some really good features with the recording that will help your musicianship. Okay, something else we've got on here is two 20 watt speakers. On the lower model, something like the YDP 144, um, which is the lower model in the YDP series, and in the S series, the YDP S34, they're only much more like eight watt speakers. So the 20 watts give it a much richer sound. And you'll notice that it's like a hi-fi to a transistor radio. The difference is quite vast and you feel the depth and the richness of the sound from something like the, the YDP 164 and the S54 compared to all the portal models and the lower models that we've just talked about. Okay, so the cabinet is, is gonna be the main difference that we can talk about. The, uh, the actual width of the cabinet, the S54 is four millimeters uh, less in width, so not, not very much at all, but less than half a centimetre in width, smaller than the uh, YDP-164. If we go on to the depth, um, the, the 164 is 11.3 centimetres um, deeper than the S54, so it sticks out that much extra. This is so much a slim line instrument, okay? If we go to the height, this is 5.7 centimetres taller. If you look just at the, the back here, it just comes a little bit taller. Um, especially when you fold it all down. So the, 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 the height is slightly different and the weight, two kilograms lighter for the slimline version because there's less 
wood all surrounding it. So the, the dimensions are going to be a little bit less on the uh, S54, but the specification is the same. Okay, let's go up to the piano now and I'll show you some of the, the sounds that you're going to get on them. Okay, so I'm sitting at the YDP S54. Don't forget it's the same spec as the YDP 164. The difference is this lovely slimline cabinet. Okay, so I want to show you the 10 voices that you have to offer on these models. We start off with, uh, when we turn it on, it defaults straight to a, a typical piano sound, a lovely piano sound, and this is the first one. going to be the, uh, the much richer, warmer sound. It's more classical. So a much brighter sound there. The next sound we get up from there is going to be an electric piano. piano sound version of this and it's more the sort of um, Whitney Houston sort of electric piano sound. It's a little bit brighter. Okay, the next sound I'm going to show you is the harpsichord. If we go on to the next voice, it's a much brighter sound. The, the, the harpsichord sound. And then we go on to a vibraphone, which I love. sound. Okay, if we go a bit further, go to a pipe organ. If we go up again, we've now got jazz. Finally, the last sound we've got to play with is strings, and they're lovely symphonic strings. Now, one of the benefits of this series is that we can actually mix two voices together. So we've got pianos, we've got strings, let's try adding them together. And the keys uh, at the bottom of this instrument here uh, all are allocated to one of the sounds. So if I wanted to put the piano with strings, I can hold down together the C and the A note, and that will now give me piano and strings. combination of two voices together and that just helps us to to use the instrument in a different way and 
and encourage us to play different types of music and get different effects. Okay, so we've gone through the voices, let's look at the recording facility that's featured now. There's a two track recording part in this instrument where we can record uh, separately the parts, we can hear them back together. Really useful, I use it a lot. We can play in the melody first or the left hand, whichever one you're most confident with, and as you play it back, you can practice over the top the other part. Um, once you've done that, you can record it as well. It'll let you record both parts and then you can play it back. You can even join in over the top after you've played them both in. So let's give an example of how to use it. I'm going to use it with a metronome. I can turn my metronome on. I can even set a beat to ring on the first beat of the bar. So if I do that again and set the four beats. Two, three, four, two, three. Okay, let me record now. So I'm going to record in my right hand, put on my metronome. Okay, so I've now recorded that. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, I'm going to record the second part now, my left hand. So record, left hand part, and we'll play it back. Let's hear them both back together now and see what it sounds like. Just wait for it to save. And here we go. Not too shabby. So the idea is we can we can play parts together and we can listen to them back. We can even join in at the top. So another thing I like to do is to record in and um, improvise. So if I now clear the memory, let's just go record, demo song, play. That now clears the memory of what I've just been putting in. Okay, and now I can record again. Let's just record in my, it doesn't matter which track, I'm going to record it into the right hand and I'm just going to play something in. And that's now recorded that for me. Uh, we put that into the right hand track. I'm now just going to improvise. I'm going to use track two to improvise over the top of it. And this is a great uh, musicianship thing you can do where you can just record something in and then play over the top and, and learn to play along with the notes you've played in with. So record, and here we go. So it's good fun just to play over and you can keep playing something back in a loop and, um, and practicing over the top of it. And it's a good way to, to build up your musicianship away from just following the dots. I find that really good fun. Okay, so we've got lots of features. We've got the um, 10 voices. We've got the chance to mix them. We can record ourselves. We can use a metronome and get a bell to ring on the first beat of the bar. There's loads of features, all good fun, but all around playing the piano. Okay, so two great models. Uh, all the information is on the link below in the information box. You can click through to our website where you can uh, see more information and email us or contact us by phone. All the details are there. My name's David Cooper from ePianos. I hope you found this video useful.